I'm delighted to greet you here today in Moscow, in front of the, one of the biggest museums in Russia, the Tretyakov Gallery. Despite the word gallery lingering in the name, this museum went far beyond this notion and became a major player on the Russian cultural scene a long time ago. And as always, it all begins with just one man. Pavel Mikhailovich Tretyakov, a Russian entrepreneur and patron who started his collection in 1856. 1856 is considered as a year of museum foundation. Simultaneously, his brother Sergei began his own collection that mainly consisted of the German and French artists. Shortly after the death of Sergei, Pavel combined his own collection with his and donated it to the city of Moscow. By collecting contemporary artists, complementing with a splendid variety of ancient icon paintings and portraits of the 18th century, Pavel and Sergei have created a real guide to the Russian art history. Their successors sustain the tradition to collect contemporary artists. But to manage the growing collection, the new space, the new exhibition and storage space was required. So decision was made to build a new building and uh, the construction of it has begun in 1965 on the bank of the Moskva River. But it took almost 18 years to complete it, and only in 1983 the whole collection of the Tretyakov Gallery has moved here to give an opportunity to renew the original building. But in 1998, finally, the collection of only 20th century uh, placed, was placed here, was exhibited here, and the new Tretyakov Gallery opened its doors for the visitors. It's the huge exhibition with enormous halls overviewing the river next to the Gorky Park and the Museum of Arts. Perfect place for an arts day. Once you're here, before entering the museum, quickly pass by and find the sculpture cemetery, which is located behind the building. It's part of the museum park where, after the events of 1991, a lot of Soviet, Soviet statues were piled up here in this very place. And uh, a decade later, it was exhibited here as well as a great reminder of the ruthlessness of time. It's not just a tribute to the great Soviet artist, uh, it's an evidence of past events uh, that is uh, depicted in every crack and fissure. You can see here, for instance, Lenin statue it was divided into two parts. Probably it, was, it fell down and the crack, this crack appeared. It is now the heritage that we all share. Inside of the museum, you are welcomed by this iconic structure. It is called the Monument of the Third International, or, in other words, Tatlin's Tower. It was designed in 1919 by Vladimir Tatlin. And this tilted axis actually reminded me, I'm sure all of you, about the Peter Bruegel Tower of Babel. And you see this iron and steel serpentine should rise up to the future, to the bright future of communism. You can also find three inner parts inside, inside of this constructivist skeleton. One in the base, it's supposed to be actually a cube, and uh, it's the place of the party, communist party meetings, uh, like a real legislation. The one in the middle is actually a pyramid, made as a pyramid, uh, is a place for executive authority one on the top, the cylinder, is the place for media, another very important component of our society, information and its power. It's like a real cherry on top. What you see here in the Tretikov Gallery is of course just an architectural mock-up that can be found also in Stockholm, Paris and London. But uh, the actual building, the actual project has never been realized has never been built in Petrograd because it was impossible to build, it is still impossible to build. So it was abandoned and left just as a dream, simply as a symbol of unreachable ideals. However, Tatlin's Tower has never been forgotten either. Many creators refer to the Tatlin's work quite often, 
Dan Flavin, Zaha Hadid, and Ai Weiwei are among others. I recommend to uh, go in the chronological order so you can see the development of Russian art history. It's a strange feeling to be here in the first halls of this museum that represent the artist in the beginning of the 20th century. You see, Russian artists were significantly influenced by liberal Paris at the time. Color and space of Matisse, brushwork of Van Gogh, vibrations of Cezanne. Every detail inspired Russian artists to make their own artworks, but closer and peculiar to the Russian soul. But the real pearl of this collection is the Black Square by Kazimir Malevich. For a century it was covered by the black oil and the great number of rumors. It was first exhibited in 1915, although the reverse states that it was made in 1913. You see, Malevich deliberately put the date not on which it was made, but the date when he had an idea of it. The shift in the 20th century was so dramatic, and the Black Square was the pioneer. It was an example how painting is not just a painting anymore. First of all, it's a philosophy, and Malevich explains it in his manifestation. Only when the conscious habit of seeing the little corners of nature, once the Madonnas and Venuses and pictures disappear, will we witness a purely painterly work of art. I have transformed myself in the zero of form and have fished myself out of the rubbishy sloth of academic art. The world will never be the same. And now we appear not in the museum hall but in the music hall because it's dedicated to Kandinsky and the artist was well known for his opinion that the painting is a musical composition and the paint is the instrument, musical instrument that he paints with. Another very important page of the Russian art history is so-called Soviet realism that was especially appreciated by the party representatives. Happy, lightful scenes of the Soviet life, a celebration of the historical events and historical figures. But a really nice discovery here in this museum is the exhibition of conceptual artists. They were for a long time suppressed by the state, uh, but they actually revealed uh, another side of the Soviet society. And what's also interesting is that in the previous halls it was all about the people from the state perspective and here it is all about the state from the people's perspective. Paintings, sculptures, installations. The new tragic of gallery has a lot to offer. It's a carefully crafted story of Russian art that successfully resonates with the modern Russian history. The great example of how a museum and its collection cannot be viewed without a context. Thank you very much for your attention and see you next time somewhere where the art is.